To celebrate the return of MLB Best Ball, we're giving away $50 cash. To enter, all you need to do is like this video, subscribe to the Line Star YouTube channel, and comment below the video. One lucky winner will be randomly selected from the comments and announced on our next Underdog Fantasy Best Ball show. But wait, there's more. By liking and commenting on all 11 of our best ball videos, you're automatically entered in to win a $250 grand prize. The winner of the grand prize will be announced on our final best ball show of the season on March 29th. Good luck, let's go win some money. Welcome to the On Deck Podcast presented by Line Star. All things fantasy baseball as we get set for MLB Best Ball. Alongside Tyler Weeman, I'm Shannon Somerville. Best Ball season is around the corner. MLB season is around the corner. So excited to get that kicked off. If you don't already have Underdog Fantasy and you're not playing in Best Ball, get on it and use our promo code Line Star for up to $100 of your deposit matched. It's a great way to get involved in the game and just have fun with the season. It's all the great benefits of fantasy baseball without having to manage your draft every week. And if you're still not sure what the draft entails or the details of the contest, we have a video that breaks it all down for you. Make sure to check that out on our YouTube channel. Tyler, are you ready to get baseball season started or what? I'm ready, let's go, I'm excited. We got a lot of news and notes to break down. First, we will get into some injury news and notes in training camp, and then we will get into our top five sleeper picks as we get set for best ball season. First, though, if you haven't already, make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and comment below. If you comment below, one lucky winner will win $50, and that will be announced on our next best ball video coming out. On today's best ball video, we do have a contest winner to announce. We will announce it at the end of the show just to keep you hooked right there for our show here. Let's get into our injury news and notes here. First of all, we've got Seiya Suzuki, the Cubs outfielder, is out of the World Baseball Classic, missing with moderate oblique strain. Tyler, what do you make of that injury news? Yeah, I, I, it's a bummer for Suzuki. One, he's going to be out of the World Baseball Classic. Two, he's going to be missing most of spring. I don't think it's going to have a huge effect to how he finishes this season. However, he could miss a little bit of the beginning of the season, uh, and he could get to a little slower start just because he doesn't have those reps from early in the season. Or, sorry, preseason. Yeah, say Suzuki was definitely one of my favorites last year. If you listen to us mm-hmm. on the On Deck podcast, you probably know that I brought him quite up, brought him up quite a bit in our daily prop bets and our home run calls. So a little disappointing for Cubs fans out there, but maybe not as disappointing as the next injury we're going to talk about, which is Tyler Glass now for the Tampa Bay Rays. The pitcher mm-hmm. has just not been able to stay healthy and in fact will now miss six to eight weeks with oblique strain. Tyler, given his track record, he only played three games at the end of last season. What do you make of this injury news coming at a race camp? You know, the world famous Tyler bump may not be happening with him uh, this season. Unfortunately, with him missing most of last season with an injury, gets into camp, hurts his oblique. Now he's out six to eight weeks, which brings him into the regular season before he's really throwing again. You got to be pretty worried about his outlook this year. I would say, you know, the first half of the season kind of shot for him. You might not see his, you know, full ability until until later in the season. Although still, even maybe partial ability for him, this is one of the best pitchers in the game with a lot of upside, but still something to take note of, right? ton of upside. Uh, Where he is going drafted currently in uh, best ball, I wouldn't take him. Once he falls a little bit, then he'll be back in the range where you can draft him again. Next up, there's news coming out of Dodgers camp, and it's not good for Dodgers fans as their infielder Gavin Lux is done for the season with a torn ACL. What devastating news for the Dodgers here. What is your initial reaction? Yeah, this is a big blow to the Dodgers team. And it might be a bigger blow to the team than it is in best ball, just because Lux was going so late in drafts now. Uh, He was, you know, a good prospect and probably a little lower than he should have been drafted now. But obviously he's off the board now. And it's giving other people some more opportunities here. 
we're not totally sure yet what the Dodgers are going to do, but definitely pay attention to what they're doing in spring, who's going to play shortstop and what they're doing with the lineup as a whole, because somebody's going to be filling the spot. Lux was going to be an everyday starter. Lastly, Padres pitcher Joe Musgrove broke his toe weightlifting. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. hate when that happens. <laughs> Tyler, what do you make of this? They say he won't throw for two weeks. Is this significant at all? He is out for two weeks. He dropped a kettlebell on his foot. So make sure you don't do that next time you're throwing kettlebells around. <laughs> uh, but... It, it, it's definitely a little bit of a blow. He he isn't going to have as much time in spring to get ready. So maybe when he starts the season, he's not fully stretched out yet, which does hurt his season-long numbers a little bit. But I think he's fine to keep drafting. I, I don't expect him to miss much time. I don't even think that remotely cracks the top 10 on weird injuries for MLB players. What about you think so? Unfortunately, I agree with you. Uh, I think chat or I'll roll this uh, Chapman this week, like slipped and fell or something like that. And now he's missing time also. Um, you know, another news that we should actually probably throw out there is Fernando Tatis is back in Major League game today. So that is big. He's on track to play once he's eligible. I know as a Padres fans, you are delighted to hear that news. Finally, Tatis will be back in action for you. Yep, and he stole a base, so he's feeling good. Looking good for Padres fans out there. Well, now we have mm -hmm. our top five sleeper picks for you in Underdog Fantasy's Best Ball. Again, if you haven't entered into Best Ball yet, go ahead and do it and use our promo code LINESTAR when you download Underdog Fantasy for up to $100 of your first deposit match. It's so much fun. And throughout the next month, Tyler and I will be bringing you all the content uh, to help you dominate your draft. So let's get into some sleeper picks. We've got some hibernators, some nappers, some light nappers, if you will. But <laughs> we're going to start things off with our hibernators here. And the first player we're going to talk about is Brewers first baseman Rowdy Telez. ADP right now, about 151. He's got some power. Actually just hit a bomb today in spring training onto the other practice fields. Now, his 219 average was the lowest of his career. However, he does have that value in the pop of his bat, 767 OPS, 461 slugging with 35 bombs, another lefty bat with pop. Playing for Mexico in the World Baseball Classic, but how do you evaluate him going into best ball? Yeah, I mean, he had a great season last year, as you just alluded to. He's set to play a ton again this season, and I don't think last year's numbers were out that outlandish for him. He's a really good hitter, and hitters in 2022 uh, with a K to walk rate of under 10%, an ISO above 240 and over 500 plate attempts, He's on the list with guys like Aaron Judge, Jordan Alvarez, Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Arenado, Mookie Betts, your boy Anthony Rizzo, and Pete Alonzo. So he's in some really good company as far as how well and how hard he hits the ball. So I like him once again. I think going, you know, 12th round or later is just way too late with mm -hmm. for this guy. And one of the things, Tyler, that you mentioned in our last video where we gave you top five strategies, you mentioned the shift or the ban on shifts this year and how it could help out lefty bats. Well, Telez is one of those bats that yes. this really could help out. And just to illustrate that, he had a 315 weighted on base average versus the shift. That went up 20 points, 338 with uh, Woba, no shift. So this is a guy that could also benefit from that as well, right, Tyler? Absolutely. He could totally benefit. Um, I, there's just a lot to like about him. He's also in a decent offense, so you can expect solid RBI numbers with the home runs. So I like him. All right. Our next sleeper pick is Rays infielder Brandon Lau. Lefty power hitter last season had a 691 OPS. He did deal with a ton of injuries, though. He was limited to just 65 games. He had a stress reaction in his back that kept him out. 
When he's healthy, he's productive for you. Last season's numbers, 221 average, 691 OPS, 383 slugging. He had eight home runs. What is your projection for Brandon Lau heading into this season? You know, he had a rough season last year. As you mentioned, he was battling injuries pretty much the whole year. He only played like 65 games. But this is a guy that's only one year removed from a 39 home run season. Tampa Bay offense is decent. They somehow are always, you know, in the mix in that division. And all reports coming out of camp right now are are that he's healthy and he's playing really well so if you can get him anywhere near that 39 home run guy he is an absolute steal at his current uh value you got to go with a guy whose nickname is bam bam i mean right there you got to make sure you're drafting guys that have good nicknames as well don't know if you knew that strategy tyler i did not (laughs) all right next up on our sleeper picks we're going with brewers righty freddie peralta ADP right now, 136.9. He missed nearly half the season in 2022, though, with shoulder issues. He was unable to really build on that 2021 season where he just had an unbelievable breakout season. When he's healthy, he looked awesome. He was 4-4 and with a 3.58 ERA when he was healthy. That's the key word here. What is your projection for what his outlook looks like, especially for best ball? Yeah, you know, he just wasn't healthy last year. However, even not healthy, he's still at a 3.06 FIP. He is extremely good pitcher. He has a career average 11.7 strikeouts per nine, which last year was down to 9.9. Now, if he can be healthy again, those strikeouts come back up. You're talking about a guy with huge K upside on a good team. Um, and I think you just need to be drafting him where he's going. He's just a little bit too late going around the 13th round. Yeah, Peralta was a guy I remember when we were doing our daily fantasy projections who would always come up on the low-owned side of things, and you could always find some really great value with him, especially with the K upside that he has. Exactly. His his K upside is unmatched, and you just really need to get that when you can, especially that late in the draft. Sure. Sure. All right, next up, we're going to the Oakland A's outfielder, Ramon Lariano, ADP 188. He flourished back in 2019. He was a five-tool player that really had some high hopes, but he really hasn't been able to replicate that. 2022 numbers, 211 average, 663 OPS, 376 slugging, 13 home runs. He does have a little bit of speed, though, around the base pass. He did steal 11 bases, but again, another guy that had been plagued by injuries. He had a right hip injury, and then he had an 80-game suspension after testing positive for PEDs. Given his, I guess, flashes of being a really great player back in 2019, how do you evaluate him as he goes into the season with a rejuvenated focus and now that he's healthy? Yeah, it's, you know, twofold. It's that he's healthy now. We haven't been able to see this guy play a full season. But if he plays a full season, I mean, you're possibly getting a 2020 guy at the very end of the draft, one of the last couple rounds, last couple picks. And to be able to get that in a position like the outfield where it gets a little limited that late in the draft, I think it's kind of a steal that you really need to think about. So I like him, you know, There is a reason he's going late, though. He hasn't been able to complete a full season. So hopefully he can this year. Although we do have to keep in mind that 2021 was a shortened season for everybody with the pandemic. And then last season, unhealthy. So there is some value there, as you mentioned. Just the fact that he's healthy now and reports coming out of camp indicate he's dialed in and focused, trying to make a name for himself this season. I mean, hope. go ahead. Yeah. You don't find his kind of pop and speed very much, especially this late into a draft. And I think Oakland, the offense as a whole, I think it can be kind of sneaky this year. So, All right. So be on the lookout for that elsewhere in California. Dodgers outfielder Chris Taylor could provide some value for you at ADP 236.8 especially given the Gavin Lux news. Now, GM Dave Roberts says he's working on a plan to fill that hole at short. 
Uh, right now in the offseason, Miguel Rojas was reacquired from the Marlins. He said that he'll get the bulk of those starts. However, Chris Taylor is a guy that could see some time at shortstops. He has had elbow issues in the past, so he is getting on a throwing plan, though. So I'm very curious yep. to see how this situation plays out. Tyler, from a fantasy perspective and for people playing best ball, what's the value here? My thought here is that I think Chris Taylor won. He, this is like the last pick of your draft. You know, this it's a throwaway pick for most. And Chris Taylor is in a spot where if he gets 500 at bats, which he did just a year ago, and with that, he had 20 home runs, 10 stolen bases, hit 250. If you're getting that kind of production out of the last pick of your draft, you're in a pretty good spot here. And I really could see Taylor getting that. With that Lux injury, I would be shocked if he's not getting 500 bats this year in a good Dodger offense. So a nice little flyer there late in the draft where you're trying to find guys who have some really high upside. You got to differentiate yourself from the field and that's a great way to do it. Yeah. And you know, the Dodgers could be a little bit thin on in the infield. They have a ton of outfielders. Chris Taylor can literally play everywhere. Mm -hmm. Gotta love those guys that you can just plug in anywhere and they can put up some numbers for you. Mm -hmm. So those are our top five sleeper picks. But don't you worry, we got some value for you in our honorable mentioned, maybe some more light sleepers, if you will, nappers. Are you a napper, Tyler? I'm not much of a napper. <laughs> All I, right, well, one, once it's light out, I can't, I can't <laughs> sleep. I, I want to go. But we like nappers as they pertain to best ball drafts. So let's start off yeah. with Twins infielder Jorge Polanco, ADP 149.6, returning from knee injury, which really hurt his production in late 2022. Just a 208 average with just two home runs in 29 games post the All-Star break. That's the thing, though. After the All-Star break, when he was dealing with that knee injury, his stats were awful. But prior to that, mm -hmm. he was on a roll. 14 home runs, 786 OPS. What do you see from Polanco? Yeah, and, you know, a year before that, 35 home runs, 11 stolen bases. He's He is a really good hitter. He battled injuries last year. They're saying he's he's healthy again. Everything is looking good coming out of camp. So I just think he's going way too cheap right now with, uh, with his ADP just because of an injury-laden second half. Probably our lightest snapper, snooze mode snooze do you put yep. your alarm in snooze mode this is snooze mode right here this is snooze mode yeah <laughs> angels right feeler taylor ward is at adp 77 and a half now phil nevin has some high praise for him thinks taylor ward could have an mvp caliber season yeah. that is some high praise but he is coming off an absolutely breakout season he was a finalist for the silver slugger award 281 average 833 ops 473 slugging 23 bombs for ward what are your expectations mm -hmm. for him this season now you know, going at ADP like 77, you don't really think of this guy as a sleeper, but I think he's still going underdrafted. He was the best player in baseball for a month, month and a half when we started the season. He's on a team with Trout and Otani. There's going to be base runners. He's going to have the ability to, you know, score runs, get RBIs, get home runs. We saw his power last year. Now, after his month and a half of just totally crushing where he's hitting 347 with 10 home runs. He then got kind of banged up. It wasn't quite the same the rest of the season with, you know, the getting in, getting hurt. Also, Otani and Trout were kind of in and out of the lineup, mainly so Trout there. So I think with the healthy Angels team, they also got some more help in like Hunter Renfro and some more bats here. Mm -hmm. I think Ward's in a really good spot to – get some solid production and that 77 ADP may be a little too high still. Yeah. You mentioned the angels with Shohei and trout there. There was a period of time when it seemed like everybody on the angels was hurt. And the fact that he was yeah. still able to produce at such a high level without those uh, guys in the lineup to kind of help bump his stats up totally. a little bit just really says a lot about his talent level and what you can expect in 2023. Yep. Let's go. <laughs> We're all set there. All right. 
Tyler, we got an order of business here. Contest winner time. Yeah! All right, we're announcing our winner for our contest for our underdog videos. All you have to do to enter in is like this video, be subscribed to our channel, and comment below. You're automatically in. You could win $50. We will announce the winner on the next Best Ball video, so be sure to tune in. As for today's winner, we've got Larisha Tuggle. Congratulations. You win $50. Thanks so much for watching our content, for liking our videos, for commenting. Make sure you email us or message us to claim your prize. If you want to be a winner too, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. Also, let us know who you're going with for your best ball drafts. Or if you have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comments below. We'll let you know and give you our expertise. We'll also be having live drafts later this month. We'll be having all the video content to help you dominate underdog best ball which is one of Tyler's favorite fantasy tournaments that there is. He does it when he's walking his dog. Wouldn't be surprised if he told me he does it, you know, in the shower. I don't know. Tyler, you know, where's the weirdest place you've done best ball, right? <laughs> yeah, I would say just walking the dog. That's, that's... We're not doing it in the kitchen. We're with, with Olivia. No, no. Gotta, gotta give Olivia the, the attention. Somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, good luck in all your fantasy best ball drafts. Again, if you have any comments, drop them below, and we will see you guys next time. Have a good one. Have a good one, guys. Bye.